Welcome to part two of my workshop redo video. The best place to start is with my empty tool board. I had gotten all the tools taken off of this, which you can see in part one of the video, and I needed to get it tacked down in place with some brad nails to make sure everything stayed put. The next step from there was to get it painted. A big part of this workshop redo process was to brighten up my space and give a more consistent look. And the brown tool board really didn't help things there. So I found some kills primer that we had left over from a house project from a few years ago, got it mixed up, and started using a roller to apply it to the pegboard. I don't really love painting. It's not a process that I typically enjoy or try to do, uh, but this went pretty quickly, and with the roller, uh, it was able to make fast work of it. By the time I was done, I ended up putting two coats of primer on there and just left it at that. The next piece was getting some drywall installed. We had open studs in this one little corner or section of the back wall of the garage. And in fact, most of the garage is open studs, but this in particular was open and I wanted that closed off again to brighten the space up and to give a more finished look because this back wall will be the backdrop for many of the project videos that I do in the workshop. Again, we had some drywall left over from a previous home project, and I wasn't that concerned with the appearance or the condition of this drywall because it is in, in the garage. It's not a huge uh, issue if it's not in perfect shape. So I cut it into size, got it screwed down to the studs, and then started getting it ready for prep. Now, I have to say, I don't really do much painting, but I really dislike doing drywall. So I did, admittedly, a pretty quick and dirty job of taping and mudding. Once that was done, I was able to go back and actually paint over that with white. Same deal, just using the Leftover Kills primer to paint this and really just brighten up that back wall there. I am not super worried about being able to see the seams where I taped and mudded um, because, again, this is just to try and brighten the space. If it were inside the house, that would be a different matter and I would probably hire a professional. The fun part for me was getting my tool board organized, and I actually spent a really long time doing this. I really like the knolling philosophy of everything aligned to 90 degree angles or aligned to the shop itself that the artist Tom Sachs espouses. I will link to his Always Be Knolling video uh, during this section right here. But it was, a, it was a really nice break in this project where I was able to start getting things put back together, and here's what I finally settled on for my tool arrangement. In keeping with the almost free nature of this project, I decided that the thing that I would use to create the look and feel of the back wall was a pallet wall. This is a project that's been done before in homes and workshops, and so there were some great links that I found on places like Pinterest, and it gave me a chance to really kind of pre-visualize what this would look like. Now, I have to say, tearing down pallets is really difficult and time-consuming work. I always uh, have been settling on the process of cutting off the side rails with a circular saw and then basically using a pry bar and hammer it to pry off the slats. And the slats themselves were primarily what I wanted to use to actually create the pegboard wall. Once I had enough slats taken off the pallets and prepped to use, I could start the process of adding those to the back wall. I had just gotten an 18 gauge brad nailer from Harbor Freight a few weeks before I started this part of the project for something totally unrelated, and this ended up being a lifesaver. The thought of using hammer and nails and doing it by hand or using screws to attach these in retrospect would have taken roughly forever. So I was really glad that I had this 18 gauge brad nailer that would allow me to put these up pretty quickly. One thing I wanted to do was to sort of showcase the pegboard and the tool wall, and I decided to do that by doing sort of a double section of pallet slats and mitered corners to act as a frame around the tool board wall. I think that turned out really nice, and as you can see here, I'm using a level to make sure that this part in particular really looks good, because this will be a nice focal point of the workshop and of the, the way that it's going to look as a backdrop for videos. So I went through and added the first round of pallet slats around the outside of the pegboard and then went back around, this time using the mitered edges, the mitered corners, to frame things out. This went pretty quickly. The 18 gauge brad nailer, like I said, really made pretty short work of this. And there were a few little spots where I had to go back and kind of knock things into place a little bit. But for the most part, that section went pretty well. 
the next section was the majority of the pallet wall and that was the section to the right of the tool board. This admittedly took a long time to do. There was a lot of prep work involved in tearing the pallets uh, slats off of the pallets themselves and with some of these uh, I was able to find slats that were the same width and take them across the wall pretty quickly and pretty easily. After I used up that set of slats, however, I really had to kind of go back and scrape the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, to find slats that were all the right length, or even to rip things down on the table saw so that they were the right width, so that one run of slats across the wall would all be the same height top to bottom. And it did take a while. I'm certainly not going to show all of that process because there was a lot of work in cutting things off at the miter saw, in ripping things down to width on the table saw. But by the time it was done, I could really start to see it taking shape. Here you can see ripping down some slats. And that was to frame out the air conditioning unit that was also part of the back wall. I did the similar approach to what I used for the tool board in terms of mitering corners. There's a little bit of a gap at the bottom there, so I may go back and redo that. I also had to account for the outlet that's uh, in the back wall there that the air conditioner is plugged into, but a jigsaw and a couple of minutes cutting out that space worked out pretty well, and I was able to just nail that section in place. I did have to spend a couple dollars on buying some replacement brad nails, as you can see there, but up until this point in the project, that is the only money that I have actually spent in terms of buying stuff for this. In part three, you'll see that I do spend a little bit of money, but that's for another video. One place I had to make an interesting decision in this project was prepping the slats that went up against the existing cabinet on the left-hand wall of the shop. There were some cabinets that were already installed there, and I could have taken those cabinets down, moved everything over, rehung the cabinets, but that would involve unloading those cabinets, uh, taking them off the wall, moving the shelf that's next to the cabinets, moving the cabinets, rehanging them, putting... You get the idea. It would have been kind of a time-consuming process. So I made a simple little jig for the miter saw, cut the edges so that they were beveled, and the door for the cabinet could still open, and then just put everything back in place along with that. Here I'm putting in the very last slat, and I have to say that feeling of putting this very last slat in there was very, very fulfilling. By the time this project was done, I had tons of scrap. Thankfully, my brother-in-law let me take it over to his house to burn. And that was the end. Here's what it looks like in terms of the finished product with the back pallet wall in place. Total money spent to this point is about $6 in brad nails. Stay tuned for part three, where I will show building the back workbench that goes in the one remaining unfinished portion of the back wall for my workshop. Thanks for checking this out. I'm really excited to be able to jump into part three and building the workbench. It will be a couple of weeks because I'm doing some intense training this summer for my day job as a technology and engineering teacher, but that next section should be up in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on Instagram at Bill Van Loo.